Well, it is indeed a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Let me get my headphones off real quick. I don't know why I have them on. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. So let me tell you, a lot of things happened <laughs> this past week. A lot of things happened. I didn't expect to get this out this early, too. But things happened this week. <laughs> let me tell you. Um, so let's start with the NAL first because there's a lot that happened. A lot happened. You have you have the West Texas Warbirds beating the Albany Empire 41-38. And then San Antonio continues to stay undefeated. They beat Fayetteville 40-27. to Look at the standings right now. The Empire are one and three. West Texas won their first game. San Antonio still unbeaten, but everything else made this week completely insane. And basically, the gist of it is, you know, the Antonio Brown situation got more wild and more crazy as many articles, hit pieces, tweets, whatever, you name it, went out this past week. What we do know, or at least what what we all can confirm now, is that some big players were released. They got their payment, of course. Um, Tom Manas is back. Darius Prince is gone. We don't know where he's going to end up at right now. He could go to Jacksonville, too, with Castronova. Jonathan Bain, he's now part of the Empire. And again, Castronova's in Jacksonville. You know, there's other guys like Tron Shorts, you know, who's with West Texas right now. You know, Roland Rivers had the start for the Empire instead. Jeff LeBac. You know, along with the good, along with a good friend of ours, uh, who's finally started his YouTube, um, I'll link that, or I'll mention it. You know, in a moment. You know, they they got into some beef with AB throughout the week, which included AB um, using a term which we will not repeat here. Michael Hall out here, you know, had hamstring issues. Couldn't kick the ball very well. Thus, the Empire had to go for, you know, two and three-point attempts most of the time. I'm going to say just two-point attempts. Why am I thinking of the CIF right now? You know. Uh, then you have the indoor football insiders who we called them last week. And they've just been saying baseless things throughout the entire season. Well, them along with, if you've heard of Beyond the Walls, that's Todd Mintz. That's Todd Mintz, you know. If you heard of that guy, stay as far away from those two pages as possible. They just they just like to click to, you know, get some bait. There, I don't think there's any sort of pay issue. Players said, nah, that's not what happened. So it doesn't make any sense. Is it AB or did Mike Quarta fire Tom Manasa? I really don't know. Ben Bennett? Is with Manas, David Ware. He's in Orlando helping out Herky Walls and the Preds. So the NAL was wild this week. But thankfully, we got some good games out of it. Thankfully, we got good games out of it. In the IFL, yes, you see me putting the scores here. I forgot to do that. I've been forgetting to do that. You look at the standings, not much has changed really. I mean, the Barnstormers are 0-6, Tulsa's 1-5. They're both not good. But Iowa's even worse because, you know, they they look completely lost right now. You know, Frisco's still undefeated. They beat the brakes off of Duke City in the second game today, which just ended, which is, you know, insane to me that Duke City looks also completely lost. Like, Green Bay's pack at the stands. Darren Arbett. He's not with Bay Area anymore, so I expect guys like Dixie Wooten to, you know, maybe, you know, go up in that head coach position, and, you know, and stuff like that. And Bay Area beat the brakes off of Vegas for the most part anyway. A lot of blowouts. A lot of blowouts. Not just Saturday night, but today as well. Naz Tucson was the only game that was 
you know, competitive along with Massachusetts Green Bay, and I believe Brackett was playing for Massachusetts, if I'm not mistaken. I know ben, uh, was ben, Benefield and Brackett were playing, I think. I, think. I can't remember because I fell asleep during that game. I fell asleep during the duration of that overtime thriller between the Pirates and the Blizzard. And you look at the West, you know, it's still it's still in a good spot right now. Arizona obviously took a week off, you know, and then, um, yeah, I mean, the East looks nice. Everything's in a good position. Green Bay can still counter. The West still in a precarious position. You know, a lot of teams can make statements as we're getting closer to the halfway point of the regular season, the IFL. Getting a little bit closer. In the CIF, though, not much has changed. I mean, Omaha had the fight against Sioux City. It, it was a great game to the bitter end. The other games, on the other hand, Rapid City getting beat up by Gillette, Salina. You know, you know. I mean, sure, Southwest Kansas kept it close early, but the Liberty, too much the end of the Billings, beat the brakes off of Topeka. Billings clinched the playoff spot. I mean, whoop de doo in a, in, a, in a league where, you know, the top six out of eight teams make the playoffs. whoop de doo It's up to Southwest Kansas, who plays Rapid City and Topeka as their final two games. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is going to be quite funny. Will Rapid City and Topeka even have a win this year? I left that as a question in the community tab. So I hope somebody answers that. Somebody please answer that. Will Rapid City and Topeka get a win this year? Uh, this is going to be hilarious, you know, if they both end up 0-10. And then everybody else, AWFC, as I expected, as it has been long expected, Idaho replaced that Capital City game that they were supposed to play last night with the Desert Sentinels out of another unrelated Civi Pro Outdoor League or whatever. Idaho easily took care of business 86-30. to There's a lot of AA to AL2 scores. And again, how is the AL2 playing games consistently, whereas the AIFA is having trouble even getting you know one game in? And I don't care over oh, well, the season for the AIFB starts in May or whatever. I, 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 I don't care. I mean, this is just a cluster of a mess. A cluster of a mess. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. You know, Waterloo, Iowa. Waterloo, Iowa is going to be the third team in Tim Brown's Arena League and in the GLAA playoffs or the GLAF whatever you want to call it at this point. Ohio got beat up by West Michigan, and surprisingly, Southern Michigan beat Battle Creek. I'm not sure when the championship is because, you know, it's West Michigan running the show. So who knows? That was a doubleheader at Trinity Health Arena. Again, I've said my piece already on what West Michigan should do, which is join a different league for far more. So... You know, let, let me let me let me let me let me break it down real quick. So so again, this is what I'm talking about right here. Again, the Dallas Falcons, they played an exhibition game against far like an outdoor team or whatever. They lost that game, by the way. They lost that game. It was confirmed that they did lose that game. You have the Capital City Cyclone schedule over here on this side. Don't even know if they're gonna play because they haven't played any games this year. So far, they haven't. They backed out of every game they were supposed to play. The Dallas Falcons, they did not show up for that game against Mississippi. That's why, you know, Mississippi had to really. I think they just replaced that with like the Alabama Empire or whatever um, from I think the EIF or whatever. And then South Florida Thunder. What is this? What is this disgusting looking schedule right here? The Southern Renegades. I think they played like one game this year. Of course, Peach State is going to play. Peach State shows up. They know how to play some football. Again, the Dallas Falcons, look at that. Look at that graphic. That says Falcon. Dallas Falcon. Wow. 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 Great graphic, guys. 
this is not even a full league schedule, by the way. When you have, you know, the Renegades and you have the Thunder and you have the Peach State Cats here. Again, not a full league schedule for the Dallas Falcons because, I mean, look at that. That says, you know, well, actually, that's actually right. But better, better safe than sorry. But again, the only three teams you can really trust in this league are the Las Vegas Kings, who are basically playing all their games out west. So why even, why, why is it even worth the trouble to play, you know, Capital City, Dallas, South Florida, Columbus, and Mississippi? Why is it worth the trouble? Just stay as like the, basically the beat 'em up team in the AWFC while the AWFC figures things out. And that's what that's what Las Vegas has been doing. They have five games scheduled against AWFC teams anyway. But everybody else, you know, Columbus and Mississippi, they have their things together. Columbus more so than Mississippi, obviously. But these three teams right here, I cannot trust any single one of them with anything because all three of these teams reek of scams. You have you have Alton Walker, you have Avion Hale, you know, those two mainly. It's put up or shut up time. I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of the AIFA. Please, how are you ran worse than the AL2? It doesn't make any sense. That's what, I, that's what I like to ramble about this week instead. Forget the NAL nonsense. Let's ramble about this some more. I'm tired. I'm tired of this nonsense. We'll see what the schedule, you know, looks like next week for the AIFA. We'll see We'll see what happens next week. Nukon couldn't figure it out either. I can't tell you. I can't tell you because I'm going insane. <laughs> Just trying to talk about this nonsense. Take care, and I'll see you all next Sunday. Actually, no. I'll see you all before that Sunday. I'll see you probably. It's probably going to be May of night instead. We'll be talking you know, the PLL draft, the NL quarterfinals, and now the semifinals are set, and then the college across the men's bracket and everything like that. So I'll actually see you before Sunday. I'll see you before next Sunday. So take care, everybody. Have a good night. Wow. Glad I got this out before 6.30. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy for y'all to react to this. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Oh, and obviously, my 26th birthday will be tomorrow, so give me some happy early birthday wishes. <laughs>